Hi students, welcome back to Study Smart Channel. Today we are going to look into Chapter 2 of Common Science, Cell as a Basic Unit of Life. Let's start. Okay, let's see what are the topics we are going to cover in this class. We are going to understand the definition of cell, the definition of organelles, we are going to see plant cell coming alive and also get to know the stories about each of the organelles. And finally, we will do a brief comparison of animal and plant cell. First of all, let us get to know about cell. Cell is the basic unit of all living things, be it plant, animal, microorganisms or human being. The very scratch material that we all made up from is cell. Do you know that each cell can undergo living processes such as growth, excretion, cell division, and they can even carry out respiration process. Wonderful, isn't it? As for today, we are going to look into two main cells, which are animal and plant cells. Each of these cells have their own organelles. What are organelles? Just like human beings have organs inside our body, organelles are the organ for the cells. Example of organelles are nucleus, chloroplast, mitochondria, vacuole, and others. However, you need to know that not all the organelles are found in both animal and plant cell. As a result, even the appearance of animal and plant cell are not similar. This is one of the reasons for plant cell to have a fixed shape, while animal cell do not have a fixed shape, because only plant cell has a cell wall, while animal cell do not have a cell wall. Now, let's enjoy a 3D image of a plant cell with its organelles inside the cell. Alright, now we are going to study about cell's organelles. First of all, we have the storage container for the cell. Just like we have our own backpack to store our things, cells also have their storage container. This container is called as vacuoles. Vacuoles contain all the items of cell in the fluid form which is known as cell sap. The items stored inside vacuoles are water, ions, sugar, protein and waste products. We can imagine vacuole more to a lady's handbag. It is so spacious that it can store so many things and occupy up to 90% of the cell's volume. Quite packed, right? Other than that, when filled with the cell sap, vacuoles exert pressure against the cell wall and this will provide support to the cell firmness and also for the plant structure overall. This is one of the reasons also for plant cells to have a fixed shape. So, how about animal cell? They do not have a fixed shape, so is that mean that they do not have vacuole? Well, you might not be entirely wrong if you answer yes to this question, but there is a twist. So, what is the twist? The twist is, some of the animal cell do have vacuoles, but they are not a big vacuole just like in plant cell. The vacuoles in animal cell are quite small and there are few stagger around the cell. They mostly function as a storage only and do not provide the firmness to the cell structure. Hence, the presence of vacuoles in animal cell can be deemed as insignificant when compared with plant cell. Now, let's go to the second organelle which is the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is a jelly-like material in which the cell organelles are implanted. Think of a cell like a house and the cytoplasm is like the jelly stuff filling up the space inside the house. It keeps all the important parts of the cell floating around inside, kind of like how the air fill up the balloon. So, cytoplasm is the place where all the action happen inside a cell. It's where all the organelles live and work together in order to make the cell alive and function well. Next, we have mitochondria. Imagine mitochondria as the power plant of a cell. Just like a power plant generates electricity for a city, Mitochondria generate energy for the cell. They take in nutrients from the cell and break them to produce a molecule called ATP, which is like the energy currency for the cell. This ATP is used to power all the activities happening inside the cell from moving around to making new molecules. So in simple term, mitochondria are like the energy factory inside a cell, keeping everything running smoothly. The next organelle we have is nucleus. Nucleus is the brain of the cell. Inside the nucleus, there are instructions called DNA, 
which are a set of blueprint for the cell. These blueprints contain all the information needed to make proteins and carry out other important tasks in the cell. Just like how a brain controls the body, the nucleus controls the cell's activity by sending out instruction to the rest of the cell. It's also responsible for things like cell growth, reproduction, and keeping everything in order. So, in summary, the nucleus is like the boss of the cell, making sure everything happens in the way it should. Alright students, from this picture, can you find out the function of cell membrane? Well, cell membrane is like the guard for your cell. It serves as a selective barrier that separates the internal environment of the cell from the external environment. Did you realize how I mentioned selective barrier? It's because cell membrane controls the movement of substances into and out of the cell by allowing certain molecules to pass through while preventing others from crossing. Next, we have chloroplast. Let's think of chloroplast like the kitchens inside a plant cell. Just as a kitchen where the food is made in our homes, chloroplasts are where the plant make their food and store their energy. They contain a green pigment called chlorophyll which give plant their green color. Using sunlight, water and carbon dioxide, chloroplasts perform a magical process called photosynthesis. It's like cooking the sunlight into food. Fantastic, right? So, in conclusion, chloroplasts are like the tiny kitchen in the plant cell where they can cook the sunlight into food in order to keep themselves healthy and energized. Alright students, now is the time for smart question. If chlorophyll is the one responsible for providing green color in plants, does that mean that non-green plants do not have chlorophyll? If that's the case, how do they make their own food? Think about this and I will let you know the answer at the end of the video. Now, let's compare between the organelles inside animal and plant cell. First of all, we have cell wall. Do you still remember which cell have cell wall? Well, plant cell is the one as cell wall while animal cell do not have cell wall. This is why plant cell have a fixed shape while animal cell has a irregular shape. Next, we have cell membrane. Which cell has cell membrane? Well, both animal and plant cell have cell membrane. Cell membrane is the one that acts like a guard for your cell whereby it will decide who can enter and who can exit from your cell. Next organelle we have is the cytoplasm. Remember what is cytoplasm? It is the jelly-like substance that holds the other organelles in your cell. And yeah, of course, both the cells have cytoplasm. Next, we have chloroplast. If you can recall the function of chloroplast, it is a kitchen in a plant cell where the food is being made. We all know that animals cannot produce their own food unlike the plant. So this means that only plant cell have chloroplast, not animal cell. And next we have big vacuole. Yes, only plant cell have big vacuole. Animal cell sometimes can have few smaller vacuoles, but their function is not so significant as the vacuoles in a plant cell. And next we have nucleus. Nucleus is the brain of your cell. And of course, all the cell need their brain. So lastly, we have mitochondria, which is the energy producing factory in the cell. Both plant and animal cells are living things and they need energy to carry out their living processes. So they both have mitochondria. So I hope by now you clearly understand the function of each of the organelles and also the comparison between animal and plant cell. Okay students, time for smart answer. My question for you was, if chlorophyll is responsible for providing the green color in plants, does that mean that non-green plants do not have chlorophyll? If that's the case, how they can conduct photosynthesis? Well, the answer for this question is, non-green plants do have chlorophyll, which is essential for them to carry out photosynthesis process. But they also have other dominant pigment that give them different color than green. So, this means that all the plants that undergo photosynthesis have chlorophyll which is green in color. But the color of the plant will be decided by the dominant pigment in the plant. So, if a plant has red pigment as its dominant pigment, then the plant will be red in color. But 
they can still undergo photosynthesis as they also have non-dominant chlorophyll pigment. Alright students, with this we came to the end of our study session today. Until we meet again in the next video, thank you and have a nice day. Bye!